From having explosive rage moments at various games, to meeting Ronaldo, to accidentally flashing the stream, I Show Speed has had the most unique rise to fame out of any live streamer I've ever seen on YouTube. And in this video, I will uncover the most important moving parts behind this explosive success, but also how this came at a cost. Chapter 1 Beginnings First, to understand how he got his rise to fame, we need to understand just how he started out and what his beginnings were. On March 21st, 2016, Darren Watkins Jr. would create his YouTube channel, I Show Speed. The next year, he would publish his first YouTube video to the platform, but he didn't gain any attraction from this. On December 28th, 2018, this would be the day that everything would change, as it would be his first ever live stream, which of course would be the thing that led him to where he is today. The stream in question was a Fortnite 1v1 with voice chat enabled, although it had no face cam. From here, he would create a couple more live streams, but would begin to take it seriously around the time of lockdown in 2020. Here, he would begin to play the game that would actually gain him some popular popularity, which was NBA 2K20. This did not bring him instant success, but on April 20th, 2020, he would livestream himself raging at the game and being toxic, and this would be the first time when people would start to realise just how funny and underrated he was. He would continue doing this every single day consistently and upload rage highlights of the streams for months, growing his audience slowly. Over the months of doing these streams, he would become known for getting angry at games, and around the time of February 2021, he experienced the first problem with building a community of toxic people. During various live streams, it would lag or sometimes completely shut down, all because someone in the chat had access to his IP address and was tampering with his router, constantly booting him off the internet. Aside from the toxic people in his audience, the rest were sympathetic and genuinely felt bad for him as he was just trying to stream and entertain. Chapter 2 The Rise Around the time he reached 600,000 subscribers on June 28th, 2021, this would be the point where he switched from playing 2K20 in Fortnite to streams where he would play multiple games and do a lot of different things throughout the whole stream. Now that he had a larger than average following, this came with an even more toxic chat. See, the whole reason most people decided to watch him in the first place was just to see him rage at something and push him to his limits as it was entertaining to them. Speed was very aware of this and would often read out the annoying comments in the chat, then react and become extremely angry. Sometimes this would be a genuine reaction, and other times he knew it would be a viral clip that he could just upload later on his channel, growing his audience even further. His viewers were never really able to tell when he was being serious or not, and it was almost as if you were watching him play a character. But regardless, the strategy he was using was working. From this point on, he would introduce a wide variety of things that he would do on stream, including having girls on stream, playing Talking Ben, which was all around the time of February 2022, and gain him even more traction as he was literally beefing with an animated dog with limited responses including yes and no. But Speed was able to make this very entertaining, mainly by asking odd questions and raging at Ben's response. He would also play a range of different games, mostly suggested by chat, with his audience being most attracted to when he play horror themed ones since he got extremely scared by them. Speed would then mix it up by visiting the now shut down chatting website Omegle, where he often tried trolled the people he came across or would try and riz them up, always telling people he was 19 years old despite being 16 at the time, which became a recurring thing he would say on his live streams. This website would also be the place where he would sometimes be connected to someone from his audience and they would typically say something racist to get him angry which he genuinely didn't like obviously, but at the end of the day it would mean more views for him and so he went along with it. The amount of times he would get pushed to his limits all paid off as around the middle of the month he would hit the large milestone of 5 million subscribers, showing no signs of slowing down in growth. As September came around, this would be the time where Speed would fully embrace his insane persona, and would go the extra mile for virality and attention, performing various trending challenges, some being extremely dangerous. These included the cinnamon challenge, where he would place a ridiculous amount of cinnamon into his mouth at one time, and would attempt to swallow it without any liquid, which of course gives a high risk of choking. Another was the shampoo challenge, and to be honest, do I really need to explain why that would be dangerous and not to mention extremely painful? One final challenge
which I'll mention was the vacuum one, where he'd sit in a trash bag, vacuum all the air out of it, until he was essentially trapped inside. These challenges really displayed how committed he was to becoming a large name in the live streaming community, and it was working. Even if you didn't like him, you can't deny that he would always make these challenges entertaining and often leave viewers worried for his life, and of course, gained him even more subscribers. Chapter 3 The Controversies his first one was back in December of 2021, where Speed was invited on a Discord dating show by Aiden Ross, who was live on his Twitch account, and Speed was live on YouTube. At one point in the stream, Speed was faced with an Instagram model and asked her the question, Say if we're the last two people on Earth, and we had to reproduce to make the world continue, would you uh, reproduce with me? She responded with no, and he replied with, Who gonna stop me? I will. Jeez. You're not stopping me! This clip was shared all across Twitter and was gaining him a lot of backlash since he was considered to have taken it too far. A lot of his audience defended him making the claim that he was only 16 and would make jokes like this all the time and had a bit of a toxic nature as his chat were the same. It is also worth noting that he may have been playing a character at this point with the only issue being that the girl was not aware of this. The next day on December 14th Twitch would permanently ban Speed's account meaning he could never stream on their platform ever again and that he couldn't be in any other people's streams who were on Twitch because if he was, their account would have the risk of being banned. And so this was the point where he would almost disconnect with his close streamer buddy Aiden Ross. Fast forward to April of 2022, while playing Valorant, Speed was playing with an open mic in voice chat, meaning he was able to speak to other players without having to hold down a button as you would do with push to talk. He decided to take a toxic approach to his playing style for the stream, most likely because at this point he was fully aware that the more extreme he acted, the more the chat reacted and got hyped. With this in mind, at one point in the stream, he joined a lobby with some girls, and once the game had officially started, he began to make comments on the fact that the girls were on his team, saying things like, Is a female talking to me? Oh Is a female God. talking to me right now? And do your husband dishes! Of course, I don't actually think he agrees with what he said, and it's part of his character, but who knows. As a result of these comments, he was given a strict 30 day ban from the game. On April 6th, the clip would get shared all across Twitter, and after receiving quite a lot of backlash, Valorant decided to raise his ban to permanent. After this, Speed would come out and apologise for his actions, whilst others still defended him. The 4th of July. This would be a chaotic day for Speed, as he had no idea what was to come. During the stream, everything was as normal. He looked at his Discord server, even FaceTime KSI. After the call had ended, he went off to celebrate the 4th of July, which if you aren't aware, is the USA's Independence Day, where millions set off fireworks for the holiday. Now, how did Speed decide to celebrate? He bought fireworks, just like regular people, and then did something extremely questionable, which was his bright idea of setting one of them off in his own bedroom. I genuinely don't don't know what was going through his head when he thought of that. Even though he usually plays a character, I don't think he would have gone that far as to actually risk his own life and his own family's, and I think he just really didn't think it through. As he placed the Pikachu themed firework down, everything was fine. But then it quickly became a nightmare. It started spinning and letting off sparks everywhere. Of course, he was panicking and so was his mum. After the fireman came, everything was luckily okay and no one was harmed. The next time he streamed, everyone spammed common sense, which annoyed him a lot, but it's kind of warranted. Forwarding on to August 8th, 2022, Speed was spotted for the first time in his career. After he had listened to his chat, who had told him to prank the Ohio Cincinnati Police Department. The reason for the SWAT team arriving was most likely because some people in the chat thought it would be funny to call the SWAT team on Speed for no reason. Or it was the fact that the police department weren't pleased with the prank. But who really knows the reason? When they arrived, he continued on the stream, and the clip of him being cuffed was even on various crime channels. Luckily, his friend Aiden Ross who I mentioned earlier, came to his aid and bailed him out, and so Speed was freed the next day. On November 16th, Speed would go live from a place other than his bedroom, which was Paradox Metaverse's headquarters. If you're unfamiliar with who that company is, they essentially run a scam that revolves around crypto, no surprise there, and had multiple methods to scam you. It could be with their dodgy course, or with their extremely subpar AAA game, which many people agreed appears to be a giant asset flip, meaning they put zero effort into that game. If you're interested in the scam and how it works, I'll link a video 
video in the description that CoffeeZilla made. It's an in-depth one and it's really good. In the room was the main man who runs the scam, Ami Talia. And later on, they bought a fake Ronaldo one, who looks a little bit like the real one, except has absolutely no skill when it comes to football. Throughout the stream, the chat was calling him out for it being a scam. And at one point, Speed muted his mic because of this, but forgot to mute them all so we could still hear him discussing the scam. In his next stream, people kept calling him a scammer and he responded by stating that he made a mistake and he shouldn't have done it. People were also defending him, saying that he's under 18 and should be let off a little bit. Now let's talk about the last controversy and I promise after this we'll talk about something more lighthearted. Throughout Speed's career, a large portion of it has been him raging, screaming and doing dangerous challenges and after doing this for years, it eventually came at a cost. In his case, around August of 2023, he announced that he had almost died, being in hospital for days due to him having a cluster headache, which are one of the most painful you can have. You could see the headache had had visual effects by the fact that his eye had swollen quite a lot. When he was released from the hospital, after almost a week of being stuck there, he went live to show that he was alive and well to the viewers. The next day, he went live again, and everything was as normal. He felt well again, and was playing a game called Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, during him playing this, at one point, he got jump scared by one of the characters from the game called Chica. Then, he did one of his typical weird random rages, but this time, in the middle of the rage, he accidentally flashed the camera. He instantly froze and couldn't believe what had just happened, and obviously, he promptly ended the stream. The next day, YouTube announced that they wouldn't be banning him from the platform, since since it was a real mistake. After taking a three day break, he went live again, which surprised me when I saw the notification as I thought he'd be done with streaming after that. Of course, throughout this stream, he was constantly called I show me by a lot of his chat, but was also mixed with some people sympathizing with him and telling him to keep pushing through the hate. After a month or so, the whole situation had mainly blown over and he'd learned to ignore the haters. Chapter four, meeting Ronaldo. Throughout Speed's whole career, he has always expressed his love for Ronaldo and hatred for Messi. He had attempted to meet Ronaldo many times before, going to his football games and live streaming it, but had never actually gotten a chance to meet him. But this would all change on June 17th, 2023, where Speed would fly to Portugal to watch Ronaldo play for his country, which resulted in a 3-0 win. After the game had finished, Speed waited in one of the parking lots where he was sure Ronaldo's limo would drive past. He was patient and eventually the car did show up and it stopped. Ronaldo got out and greeted Speed. After years of supporting Ronaldo, he finally met him and couldn't contain his excitement. You could tell he was genuinely happy to see his idol in real life and this was one of the biggest highlights of Speed's career. In conclusion, Speed had rocky beginnings to streaming, with a toxic chat and many controversies. But putting all of those things aside, he has had many highlights and moments that showed his true, kind personality. And there is still a large percentage of his subscribers that love him and aren't trolls. What do you think of Speed? Let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.